In this discussion, we will discuss the discussion question of discuss how to track and report the flow of overhead costs in a process cost system. Support accounting instruction by clicking the link below giving you a free month membership to all of the content on our website broken out by category further broken out by course each course then organized in a logical reasonable fashion making it much more easy to find what you need than can be done on a YouTube page. We also include added resources such as excel practice problems pdf files and more like quickbooks backup files when applicable so once again click the link below for a free month membership to our website and all the content on it um, so if we see a discussion question or an essay question like this we're going to pull out the key points and then expand on those key points and as we do so we'll pick up some points just by defining hopefully some of these items in something like an essay question so discuss how to track and report the flow of overhead so that's going to be one of our key point costs in a process cost system so first we want to consider a process cost system when would we use a process cost system and then we'll talk about what overhead is hopefully pick up some points in that and then we can talk about the flow of overhead which is probably the most complex part of the question so the process cost system is going to be one of the two major systems typically used in a manufacturing type of company those being a job cost system and a process co cost business the manufacturing companies those that make inventory uh, typically uh, as opposed to a service company or a merchandising company so we're actually making the inventory here we're focusing in on the process cost system as opposed to the job cost system typically making something that's going to be a uh, very the same in nature or similar in nature all the same type of items and therefore we'll we'll do we'll track the inventory through the system by process so that's going to be our goal we're tracking uh inventory items by process those inventory items typically include what we think of as raw materials and uh that we think of overhead and we think of labor typically so that's what's going to be included we here concentrating on the item of overhead as we consider the process we kind of have to start at raw materials because that's where things start we're converting the raw materials to the finished goods inventory that we will eventually sell so we'll have the raw materials we start with the raw materials we transfer those to the work in process account we put those into the work in process account and we apply anything that we can directly apply to the process that's when we start the job as it goes into the process we apply anything we can directly to that process things like direct labor and direct uh, materials and then we have all the indirect stuff the stuff that we cannot apply directly out and this is going to be anything that you can think of typically on the factory that we can't apply out to a particular process for whatever reason and you could think of it uh, like if we're talking about depreciation on the factory we don't know how exactly to break it out between the the processes within them then we're going to say okay we got to put that into overhead so this is going to be the system that we'll have with the overhead it's going to be included in finished goods but we're going to have to put this information into overhead and the journal entries will typically be a debit to overhead and a credit to any of these these other items that are costs and notice a lot of these are things that we typically think of as kind of, we would expense them. We would think of them as expenses in a service type of business. When we're producing things, they're going to be a type of inventory. They can't go directly into the work and process, but rather go into the, the overhead that we will then apply out to uh, the work and process as we go through. So that's going to include, again, anything that basically says it's going to be on the factory. So if there's depreciation on the factory, we debit not depreciation expense, but the factory overhead and credit the uh, accumulated depreciation if there's utilities on the factory or something like that we debit not utilities expense but factory overhead because it's on the factory and we're producing inventory with it and we credit the um, utilities payable or cash if we pay the utilities we might have indirect materials that are used we'll do a similar process we'll take the materials and we'll put it into the overhead and and with a debit and then we'll credit uh, the materials account whether it be a, a combined materials account or direct or indirect broken out would be coming out of indirect then if we had indirect labor same kind of idea that we would have to we would have to debit not payroll expense debit not work in process because we don't know which process to put it to but I, we know it's part of inventory and therefore debit the uh, factory overhead so these are just some example of items that 
would be in the overhead. Notice this bucket includes a lot of different things that might we, th we think should be included in the ending inventory, but we don't want to be able, we don't know how or want to go through the cost of tracking them to the specific uh, job and or the specific process, not the job or in a process, the specific process. And therefore we put, when overhead is applied to production based on a predetermined overhead rate, work in process is debited and factory overhead is credited. So then we'll of course apply out the overhead and we'll use a predetermined overhead rate in order to do so. At that point in time, we'll have the overhead in the work in process account. If there's any over or under applied uh, overhead, then typically what we'll do is we'll do whatever we need to do to make the over account zero because it's gonna, it's just an estimate and we'll usually take the other side of it to cost of goods sold. So in other words, if the overhead account still has something in it and we have to uh, debit it to make it go to zero, we'll then credit cost of goods sold. And the reverse is true. If we had to credit uh, the overhead to make it go to zero, we'll debit cost of goods sold. And that's gonna be an estimate because we're basically using an estimate with overhead. If it's material, then we may have to take that overhead and find some other system to apply out the overhead uh, to, to the work in process accounts. Then of course, once the overhead is in finished goods, along with all other costs in the finished goods, so now the finished goods are gonna be including the components of finished goods, which include the raw material, the cost of the raw material, the cost of the direct labor, and the cost of the overhead, then we can then sell it at some point in time and that's going to move it out of the finished goods with a credit to basically inventory finished goods inventory and debit cost of goods sold the expense account and that that journal entry coincides with the journal entry of the sales journal entry which is a credit to sales or income and a debit to uh, accounts receivable or to cash at that point